Now, what we are going to look at is we are going to kind of generalize this idea of moving in the negative derivative direction to functions of multiple variables, right? So, we want to now look at um, higher dimensions. What do I mean by higher dimensions? Well, now the function is not um, a function of a single variable, but the function is a function of multiple variables, right? So, for example, the function could be of the following form f of x1, comma x2 could be something like maybe x1 square plus 4x2 plus 8x2 squared, right? So, that could be it could be some arbitrary function which is which depends on two variables, right? So, now <coughs> the question is uh, how do I, you know, um, look at the corresponding ideas that we looked at in this particular case, right? So, in other words, what is the equivalent of a derivative in this higher dimension? In the higher dimensions, the derivative will now, uh, we will think of the derivative in higher dimensions as what we will call as the gradient. Now, what is a gradient? <coughs> well, if you have a function like this, what you can do is, what does derivative capture? The derivative simply captures for a one dimensional function the rate of change with respect to uh, a particular point, right? So, the moving in a particular direction, right? So, uh, the gradient is going to capture this for moving in every possible direction in x1's direction, x2's direction. If it is a function of two variables, it is going to capture it in two different directions. In particular, the gradient, what kind of an object is the gradient? The gradient is a vector of partial derivatives. Instead of the derivative, we will now look at the partial derivatives. What do I mean by that? Uh, I mean the following. So, you have a function. In this case, the function is a function of two variables x1 and x2. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to fix one of these values and see how the function behaves, uh, how the derivative of the function behaves with respect to the other value. Right? So, if you treat x1 as constant, then you get the partial derivative of the function with respect to x2. And similarly, if you fix x2 as constant, then you get the partial derivative with re respect to x1. Now, the gradient then is just collecting these into a vector, right? So, it is it's a vector, um, maybe I will write this uh, first. So, it is a vector of partial derivatives. Let us say uh, you are trying to compute uh, the gradient and, okay, maybe I will give the definition, um, the, the notation first. Let us say you want to compute the gradient and it typically use, uses this symbol uh, nabla. So, del f that is the instead of f dash we are going to call it as del f um, which is the gradient of the function. Let us say at some particular point, now every point is a vector in two dimension for, for, for a two dimensional function, right? So, let us say the point is some a comma b. This is where we want to understand what the uh, gradient looks like. So, now this is going to be a two dimensional vector of partial derivatives which is dou f by dou x1 now evaluated at x1 equals a and dou f by dou x2 evaluated at x2 equals b, right? So, this would be the definition of uh, the gradient um, of the function f at the point uh, a comma b. Now, for example, uh, if you wanted to compute the gradient for this particular point that we already have, um, let me go back to the function um, x1 squared plus 4x2 plus 8x2 squared. Let me make sure we have the same function x1 squared plus 4x2 plus 8x2 squared. So, this is the function, right? And now, if I ask the question, uh, let us say what is the gradient of this function at a point, let us say 1 comma 3. Right. So, how would I calculate that? I would simply take the partial derivatives with respect to x1 uh, which will give me 2x1 and with respect to x2 would give me 4 plus 16x2. Right. So, this is the general uh, uh, gradient at any x1, x2 and now we want to evaluate it at x1 equals 1 and uh, x2 equals 3 which for which we will get uh, 2 and 4 plus 16 times 3 which is 52, right? So, this is going to be 2 comma 52. Remember again, so this is a vector, right? So, it is going to give you 
and that's why we call it a direction right so vector has both direction and magnitude and uh, so whenever it say say we move in the direction of the negative gradient right so it means that we are moving in a in a particular direction which is given by this vector that's what it means okay um so just let me do one other simple example so that we are uh, kind of clear here uh, we we remember so we were looking at this um, cow and grass example where we wanted to find the distance uh, from the grass which was at a point 40 comma 40 right so this was the point uh, where the grass was let me make this slightly bigger right so we wanted to find um, the distance of the cow from the grass uh, which was at 40 40 and we said that that distance function which we called as d was again a function of two variables d of x1 x2 and it was uh, well x1 minus 40 squared plus x2 minus 40 squared this is the length of this point length squared of the point from x1 x2 to 40 comma 40 which is where the grass was right so now let's see what intuitively the gradient is trying to do here right so let us say we are at a current point which is um, in this case uh, let me say um, simply 5 comma 2 let's say we are at this point right so if i am at this point well um, i know that the minimum distance to the grass happens at 40 comma 40 um, now let's say i am at 5 comma 2 and then i want to compute the gradient of this function at 5 comma 2 right so what's the gradient of d um, well that is going to be um, at x1 x2 is going to be well, if I take the partial derivative with respect to x1, I get 2x1 minus 40. And if I take the partial derivative with x2, um, I get 2x2 minus 40. Right? So this will be my gradient. Um, now, I'm going to try to evaluate it at 5 comma 2. Right? So 5 to this point. Now, what is this uh, gradient? Well, of course, I can substitute the value. So it's going to be 2 into 5 minus 40, uh, 2 into 2 minus 40, right? So it's going to be um, 2 times minus 35, which is minus 70, and 2 times minus 38, uh, yes, uh, which is minus 76. Now, remember, our gradient descent would tell us that we need to move in the negative of the gradient direction, which means that if I am at 5, 2, my updated step is going to be in the negative of the gradient direction minus d of 5, comma 2, which is in this case uh, 70, 76. Now, the numbers are not important, but uh, the point is that the minus del d of 5, comma 2 is 70, 76. Both the coordinates are positive, which means that if I am at this point and I am going to add I mean, if, what does it mean to say I'm moving along this direction? I'm going to add some multiple of this vector, uh, which is a, which is eta, which is a small number. So, which means I'm going to take a small step in the direction of 70 comma 76. But what does what does 70 comma 76 mean, right? So, it's going to be 70 comma 76, right? So, 70 in this direction, 76 in this direction. So, which means that I'm going to move in this direction. Of course, I won't move all the way by adding 70, 76, I'm going to take a very, very small step, eta step, right? So, which means that I'm, the point is, I'm going to move in this direction. Well, that pictorially tells us that if I move in this direction, I'm going to get closer to 40, 40, right? So, because in this direction, my function actually decreases. And so, I'm getting closer to 40, 40. And this is not really a coincidence, right? So, you can, for instance, ask at a different point, well, let's say, in this case, um, I look at a point which is um, somewhere here, 30 comma, let's say uh, 50, which is a point here, uh, maybe not there, uh, maybe on this side. If I look at the point 30 comma 50, and now I compute what is the derivative at 30 comma 50. Well, again, I substitute it in the equation of 2x1 minus 40, 2x2 minus 40 what would I get? I would get 2 times minus 10, 2 times 10, which is minus 20 and 20 in this particular case, it so happens. 
which means that the negative of the gradient is going to be the negative of this which is 20 and minus 20 right so which means that in the x direction i am moving in a positive direction in the y direction i am moving it in a negative direction which means i am going to move in the x in this direction y in this direction which means i will move in the in the towards the third quadrant in this case um, and that is that will be my direction of movement let me highlight it in red right so my next point is going to be along this direction and yes you can see again that this is also trying to get me closer to 40 comma 40 right so the idea is that the gradient will always the negative of the gradient will always point us towards direction of decrease and in this case it turns out that it is always pointing to the place where the minimum is right so which means that we can hope that as we travel along this of course as i go in this direction my gradient's direction might potentially change depending on the function but then it will always move such that eventually i will reach the minimum that's the general idea of uh, um, you know uh, generalizing uh, simple uh, the derivative based thing to a gradient right so which means um, let me finally say that in the gradient descent algorithm for higher dimensions let me make that formal is going to have the following update rule x t plus 1 now remember x is a vector it's a vector depending on the number of dimensions or the number of variables in your problem um, equals x t you start at some point and then you take an eta step, eta is still a scalar, it is just a um, uh, step size times minus del f of x t, right. So, this is, this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a scalar. Okay, so now this is the generalization of uh, our simple algorithm, uh, which was just taking the negative f dash of x to minus uh, del f of x t, right. So, because once we have uh, generalized derivatives to the vector of partial derivatives, we can simply apply the same algorithm. Okay, and because uh, this is gradient, the general term for this is gradient and the algorithm is called gradient descent, right. So, this is the um, this algorithm now works for any unconstrained optimization problem. Um, as long as you can compute the gradient of the function, you can keep moving along the gradient direction and of course, this will take you to a local minimum, right. So, we discussed local minimum earlier. So, this function, this algorithm is guaranteed to converge to a local minimum. 